Hello everybody and welcome to a new video on this channel. Today I will show you the IIR filter basics that you need in order to implement an IIR filter in GNU Octave or MATLAB or Python or whatever you want. So what is IIR? IIR stands for Infinite Impulse Response and as the name already indicates, these type of filters have an impulse response which is infinite long. You may know the other group of digital filters called FIR filters, which stands for finite impulse response. And compared to the IIR filters, FIR filters produce an impulse response, which is finite long. IIR filters in general have a feedback loop. So in order to produce a new output sample, they need a previous output sample. And FIR filters are only feed forward filters. They don't have, a, they don't need a feedback loop. So normally I would directly head over to the workspace to make a small example. We will do an example later, but a very short one. Today we will dig into the math that we need um, in order to derive the IIR filter coefficients. And we need these filter coefficients in order to use a GNU Octave to implement our filter. So let's head over to a slide that I've presented for this topic. And where is it? Yeah, I'm still struggling with OBS. And here it is. So don't worry, it's basic math. IRR filters, infinite impulse response filters. In general, digital filters, this is a huge topic. We will not talk about here um, filter characteristics or specification or even not about stability criteria that you need in order to design a filler. Here we will really talk about the very low basics, just that you can, uh, that you are able to implement such a filter in GNU Octave. Everything starts with the difference equation. This is the description of our filter in the time domain. Remember, we are in the digital domain, so we have a sampled signal. The difference equation here, it's an arbitrary chosen difference equation that I've designed, reads as follow. y of k equals 0 0.3 times y of k minus 1 plus x of k. So a lot of new variables here. First, y is the output of the filter, whereas x describes the input signal to the filter. Can be an arbitrary signal, impulse, sine wave, whatever you want. And then we have the variable k. This is the sample index because we have a discrete signal, a signal, we have a sample signal and k is the sample index. So in this equation here tells us in order to produce a new output sample y, we have to take the previous output sample y of k minus one multiply it by 0 0.3 and add the new input sample. And from this presentation or representation, we are going to the frequency domain and in the, digit, in the um, continuous domain, we would apply the Fourier transform to the signal. And because we are in the digital domain, we are applying the set transform to the signal. And it's quite easy to produce the set transform of our presented difference equation here. So y of k and x of k, they turn into y of z and x of z in capital letters in order that we can uh, differentiate between both. And our previous output sample y of k minus one turns into z to the power of minus one times y of z. If you would have, for example, k minus three, we would have set to the power of minus three. And we have our coefficient 0 0.3 that we leave untouched. And then we have the set transform of our difference equation. So I think these two steps um, are easy until now. And from the set transform, we are going to the transfer function. The transfer function is describing our um, digital filter frequency response. And the transfer function is described as the output y of z divided by the input x of z. 
And if you have a closer look to our uh, set transform, you will see that the transfer function will result um, as one divided by one minus 0 0.3 times set to the power of minus one. So our numerator is one and our denominator is one minus 0 0.3 times set to the power of minus one. And now it's an important, um, uh, um, an important step to derive our filter coefficients that we need in order to implement the filter in GNU Octave or MATLAB. Um, so we have to derive the numerator coefficients and the denominator coefficients. And this example is quite, it is quite easy. So our numerator coefficients, B1, um, are only one because there's only one coefficient in the numerator. So the vector describing this um, coefficients called B equals one. And the vector describing our denominator coefficients equals one and minus 0 0.3. These two vectors describing our whole IIR filter. If we would have a, an FIR filter, then we would only have a numerator vector B, whereas our denominator vector A would equal to one. So um, what I want to show you here is that that you can take a difference, a difference equation and turn it into a transfer function. And from the transfer function, you can derive these two vectors that you need in order to describe the IIR filter. And with these two vectors, we are now heading to our workspace to implement the filter. So let me have a look. Okay. And ah, OBS is still not my friend. And here it is. Here's our workspace. So let's close all maybe open windows. Let's clear all maybe set variables. And let's clear our command window. Because we are using the filter command and IRR filters and FIR filters, it's useful to load the signal package provided by GNU Octave. For sure, you have to install it first. Um, then you can load it by typing package load signal. A really good package that offers you a lot of um, functions that you will need in order to proper signal processing also for filter design and all that stuff. So, and then we are describing our IIR filter again by um, using our two vectors describing the coefficients for the numerator and the denominator. So our numerator vector equals one because we only have one single coefficient in our numerator of our IIR filter. Our denominator has two coefficients one and minus 0 0.3. Again, have a look at our example that I've uh, prepared for you. Um, as a command, I will add here again that if we would have an FIR filter, our uh, vector A would equal one. So, and then for sure, we need a signal that we can apply to our filter, an input signal, X and we cho choose an arbitrary signal. Let's say two, three, zero, minus two. Okay. So, and now we want to produce our output, Y. And in order to apply our IRR filter to our input signal X, we are using the filter command. And the filter command expects at least three variables or parameters, which are for sure the coefficients of our IRR filter, so the numerator coefficients B and the denominator coefficients A and our out, uh, input signal X. And that's it. Using the filter command, using our two vectors describing our IRR filter and the input signal um, is enough to produce our output signal Y. And here it is, two, 3.6, 1.6, 0.08 and minus 1.67 for this example here. So what I want to show you is you have a difference equation, this 
a description of your filter in the time domain and then you can transform it to the frequency domain using the set transform deriving the transfer function of the filter out of the set transform and then you have everything you need in order to describe your filter in GNU Octave, MATLAB or any language you want. So this is it for today. Quite short um, GNU Octave code example. But I think this will be the start of a series because um, there is a lot more about digital filters in general and especially IRR filters um, like stability criteria and all that stuff and we will um, or I will try to cover these topics in some new videos in the future so thank you very much for watching and I hope you enjoyed, uh, enjoyed it and uh, subscribe and leave a thumb up so bye bye